ಚರಾಚರಂ ತರ್ಪದ ದರ್ಶಿತ ತಸ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಆಜ್ಞನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿ ತಸ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರು ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರು ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಸ್ಥಾವರಂ ರಂಗಮ ವ್ಯಾಚಿತ್ ಸಾಚರಾಚರಂ ತತ್ಪರಂ ದರ್ಶಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಬಾಬಾಜಿಯಂ ತ್ರೈಲೋಕ್ಯ ಸಾಚರಾಚರಂ ತತ್ಪರಂ ದರ್ಶಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಶಿರೋರಚಿತ ಪರಂ ಬುಧ ವೇದಾಂತ ಪೂಜ ಸೂರ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಶಂತೋ ಯೋಮತೀತ ನಿರಂಜನ ಇಂದುನಾದ ಕಲಾತೀತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸಮಾರೂರ ತತ್ವಮಾಲಾ ವಿಭೂಷಿತ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮ ಸಂಪ್ರಪ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ಬಂಧ ವಿಧಾಯಿನೆ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರದಾನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಶೋಷಣ ಭಾವಿ ರೋಚ ಜಪನ ಸಾರ ಸಂಪಲ ಪೂರ್ವಪಾದೋದಕ ಸಾವ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಗುರು ಸ್ಮರಾಮ 
ब्रह्मर्षि संगमनि संगव भारतेशो किशंति देवता वदर्शन भाग्ये तो दो पालशे करारे तवसु प्रपता मंदरजादि तुलसी दलमालिकाये मायानी अंजलि पुत्र समुदाहरंति विशांति द्वाभवता दारतले मुनिद्रा राधा मनोहरारे तवसु प्रभाता वेदात्रयां पतति गौतमकाल नगुया नायंति साधुनागरो वरदा सवर्गा संगीतायंति तवनाम कदा विशेषा शीतारदा दिलशया तवसु प्रभातम् गोवर्धनो दलना गोपकिशोरगोपा गोपी जनम्रता सुवेशबाबादिपोता विलोक्या मोहन सुमंगल दिव्यदेहा शिरुक्नी शबरदा तवसु प्रभाता शिवा सचिन शरणागत पारिजाता बाक्ताति बंजन के पाकर दीन बंदो दीजंता गायति जना प्रिय दीव्य रूपा शीनंद गोपतनया तबसु प्रभाता पादमाक्ष पादमुक्त पादमधारा प्रमेया पादमालया श्रेष्ठ पादमानिवास शोले Padmo Bhavati Sura Sevita Pada Padma Padma Dhinata Haraye Tavasu Prabhata Vrindata Devi Haranaya Mahindra Vandya Kandar Padar Paharati Nyasude Sharupa Chandrana Naya Siddha Chandana Nipna Deha Govindayadhavahare Tavasu Prabhata Shri Nanda Nanda Naya Shola Kumara Dheera Mayanga Dina Davichona Supushpahara Nilambuda Susharira Rama Vihara Gopala Devaharaye Tavasu Prabhata Shri Bhai Shri Dham Bhavati Satya Suganti Bhadra Shri Mitra Vinda Divasa Prabhu Puti Kanyari Vishtanti Divya Bhava Metava Seva Narda Gopi Mana Priyare Tava Suprabhata Shri Krishna Achyuta Nanta Mukunda Shori Radha Mano Arajana Dana Chakra Pane Namani Divya Muna Yurna Nisham Vadanti Kami Muhurta Samaye Tava Subrabhatam Shri Krishna Subrabhatam Ye Patanti Arnisam Bure Krita Mahapapa Shri Krishna Grahetukam Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadiradi Govinda Sarvakarana Karanam Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Chintamani Prakara Satma Sukalpa Vrisha Lakshavriteshu surabhira bhipalayantam Lakshmi sahasrishata sambrama sevyamanam Govindam adipurusham tamaham bhajami 
गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा वेणु भवतमरविंदलायतक्षम भारावत समसित बुध सुंदर कंदर्भकोटिकमीय विशेष शोक गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा आलोलचंद्रकलसनमल्यवंशी रत्नागद प्रणय केलिकलास श्याम त्रिभंगलिता प्रकाशम गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा सकलेन्द्रियमंति पश्य पंति कलयती चिरा जगति आनंद चिन्मन सूज्वल विग्रह से गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा आद्वैतमाश्रुतमनादिमनूप आद्यम पुराण पुषं न वयुवन च वेदेशु दुर्लभम दुर्लभमात्म भक्त गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा पंतस्तुकोटिशतवत्सर संप्रगा्यो वायोरता मनसो मुनिपुंगवान सोप्यस्त्रिया प्रपद सिंह विचिंत तत्व गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा एकोपुरचय जगदंदकोति या चक्तिरस्ति जगदंद चयादंत अंदरस्त पर चयंतरस्त गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा जो मनुजस्ते संप्रप्य रूपमिमा सनया न पूज सुक्ते निगमा प्रति सुबंते गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा आनंदचिन्मयर सतिभातातया कला गोलोका सात्यकिलात्म भूत गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा मंजनाचुरीत भक्ति विलोचने सत सदेवृदु विलोकयुंदरमचित्य गुणस्वूप गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा रामूर्तिशुकलायमेनिष्ठ नानावतारम करो भुवनेशु किंतु कृष्ण स्वयं समम भुमो गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा यो जगदंदकोति कोतिष्वशेष वसुदा विभूतिपीना क्रम निष्कमन तम शेषभूत गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा मयाई अस् जगदंद छता सुते त्रैगुण्यताषय वेद विताम सावलंबि पर सत्शुद्ध सत्व गोविंदमादिपुरशं तम भजा 
गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमाम भजामि आनंद चिन्मय रसत्मतय मनसु यथानिनं प्रतिपालं स्मरता मुपेत्यं लीलायते न भुवनानि जया जजस्रं गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमाम भजामि गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमाम भजामि गोलोकनाम्नि निजदाम्नि तले चतस्या देवी माये शहरिदा मसुते शुते शुम देते प्रभावनि चयावी तस्चायेना गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमाम बजामि गोविंदमादि पुरुषम तमाम बजामि श्रीस्ति श्रीति प्रलय साधन शक्ति रेखा चाये वायस्य भुवनानि विभाति दुर्गा इच्छा नरुपन अपियस्य चचे सतेसा गोविंदमारी पुरुषम तमाम बजामि गोविंदमारी पुरुषम तमाम बजामि चिरम यथा धर्म विकार विशेष योगा संजायते नहीं तथा प्रतिगस्ति एतो यशं बुद्धं मापितता समुपेतिकार्य गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि विपचिरे भय दशसर आभिपेत्या विपायते विमृताहे तु समान धर्मा यस्ताग्रे एवाइ चबिष्णुताया विभाति गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि याकारनन्न वजले भजते स्मायोगा नीद्रामनंत जगरंद सरोमकुपा आधार शक्ति मवरम व्यपरम स्वामुर्तिम गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि यस्ते कनिष्वसित काल मता बलम् या जीवन तिलो मधिलचार गदंदनाता विष्णु नाम सही यस्य कला विशेषो गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि वस्वाम्य तास्म सकलेशु निजेशु तेजा ज्वियम की यात्रा कथा यात्रा पिता द्वात्रा ब्रह्मा या इस जगदंदा विधान करता गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि यत्पाद पालवायुगं विनयाय कुंभा दंडे प्रणाम समये सगनादि राजा तीनं विहंतु मलमस्य जगत्रयस्य गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि आग्नि माइका गनमं वो मरुदिशस्य कालस्तत्मा मनसीति जगत्रयानि यस्मत् भवन्ति विभवन्ति विशान्ति यमचा गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि यक्षक्षुरेश सविता सकलाग्रहानं राजसमस्त सुरमूर्ति रचेश देशा यस्यत्न्यायाप्रमति संप्रतकालचक्रो गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि दार्मो तपापनि चयासुदायस्तपम्से ब्राह्मणि कीता पतगावधायस्चिवा यातता मात्रा विभवा प्रकाता प्रभावा गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि गोविन्दमारि पुरुषं तमाम भजामि यस्त्रिंद्रगोपमतविंद्रमावोसकर्मा बंधानरूपपलवाचनयातनोति 
ईश्वर परम कृष्ण सच्चेतनंद विग्रह अनादिराधि गोविंद सर्वकरण कारण गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तम भजा गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तम भजा ओम 
शांति 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 भूमिर्भूमनाद्योर्वनिनंतरिक्ष उपस्थे थे देव्यतिथे घिमनाद आयंगो पृष्ठ्यक्रमी दशन मातरम पुनः वितरंच प्रयं सुबह ऋगुम सदाजती वक्पतंगा शिष्रिए प्रत्युमी हास्य प्राणाद पान्यतरतिरोचना व्यख्यम महिषुव यद परो वपमुनायदर्त्या सुकल्पमग्ने तत्वपुनस्तो दीपयसी ये मनुपरो पश्य पृथ्वी मनुदत्से आदि विश्व तेवा वशवश सबरा मनोज्योतिर्जुषतम विक्षीण यज्ञुंसम ददा बृहस्पतिस्तनुता नो विश्व देवयदयत मेदिनी देवी वसुंदरा श्यादसुदा देवी वाषवी ब्रह्मवर्चस पितृनागुम स्त्रोत्र चक्षुर्मन देवी हिण्यगर्णी देवी प्रसूवरी सदने सत्यने सीता समुद्रवती सावित्री आनो देवी मयंगी महोदरणी महो व्यतिषा शृंगे शृंगे यज्ञे यज्ञे विभीषणी इंद्रपत्नी व्यानी सुरशिधिया वायुमती चरचयनी श्रिय दारा चत्योपरी मेदिनी शोपरीरथ परिगाय विष्णुपत्नी महि देवी मानवी माधव प्रिया लक्ष्मी प्रिय सखी देवी नामच्युत वल्लभा दानुर्दराय विमे सर्वसी च धीम तन्नो नर प्रचोदया शांति 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 नीला देवी गुम शरणमह प्रपद्ये गृणाई ऋतवती सवितर दिपे पयस्वती अंतिराशनोस्तु ध्रुवा दिशं विष्णुपन्गोरा शेषा न सा सूय मनोता बृहस्पतिर्मातरी श्रोता वायु संधुवान वात अविनो गृणंत विष्टंबो दिवो दरुणा पृथिव्या आशेषा न जगत विष्णुपत्नी महादेवी चीमे विष्णुपत्नी चीम तनो नीला प्रचोदया ओ शांति 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 श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरिओ अज्ञानातिरांदनाशलाकया चक्षुरोन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम जय गुदेव गुड मॉर्निंग सो कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम लास्ट वीक टुडे आई वांट टू स्पीक अबाउट द सन ऑफ लॉर्ड ऋषभ देव द वन ऑफ द मैनिफेस्टेशंस ऑफ लॉर्ड नारायण so the sun as to recap as um king rishabha dev ruled the world for many thousands of years he eventually decided to retire and i told the story or some activities that he got up to after retirement trying his very best to get rid of people to be alone to be by himself to have his peace and quiet to do his sadhana and so on so when he retired he enthroned his oldest son so yet as you know many sons so he enthroned his oldest son called bharata and so his son in turn also uh, after having gone through previously through various necessary 
educations and so on, became the new king. And by the instructions of his father, he um, married Panchani, which was the daughter of Vishwarupa. And then he ruled the world um, in extremely wise and righteous manner. So he, he ruled the world um, for, as the Bhagavatam says, for 10 times, no, 1,000 times 10,000 years. So I guess around 10 million years, which is quite a long time to rule a kingdom, I suppose. So eventually he became tired and he said, I want to retire. And so he split up the kingdom into five parts and he gave it to each of his five. He had five sons. Yeah. So as you can see, most, some of them, they have a hundred sons. Some have five sons only, which is more, I guess. He only had 10 million years of rule, so he had only a few sons. So um, the way that he ruled the kingdom, and I assume maybe also the length, had a, a great impact on the world itself. As it called, before this world was called Ajanaba, and after the rule of King Bharat, the world was known as Bharata Varsha or Mahabharata, right? the kingdom of, kingdom of Bharata. So that is why you could say India, or you could say India maybe at that time was the whole world, was renamed into Bharata Varsha. Okay? So we know, I would say, the little bit of the story of, of Bharata. So after he retired, he went to various pilgrimage places and eventually went to an ashram to spend his remaining years in sadhana. And his main sadhana was worshipping the Supreme Lord in the sun with the Gayatri Mantra. Okay. And so the verse there's a, that I chose, so there's a couple of chapters actually uh, continuing about Bharata. So it's chapter 7, 8, 9, 10 on the story of Bharata. So I, I didn't take the more obvious verse um, that we probably know about from the later on from his story about the deer and so on. I took uh, one of the verses from the time when he was in, in the ashram. And I'll take a, a few more verses later to highlight parts of the story. So the verse that I chose was from Canto 5, chapter 7, verse 11. And I'll, I'll read one or two verses afterwards also just to get an idea. Jasmin Bhava Bava Kilasa Ekala Pulahasrama Bhavane Vivida Kushuma Kishalaya Ka Tulasi Kabum Bhi Kandamula Pala Baharesh Chasamihamano Bhagyat Aradanam Bivikta Uparata Vishaya Bhilasha Uparatro Pashama Bharama Nivritam av Avapama The gardens of Pulaha Ashrama Maharaj Bharata lived alone and collected a variety of flowers, twigs, and tulsi leaves. He also collected the water of the Gandaki River, as well as various roots, fruits, and bulbs. With these, he offered food to the Supreme Lord Vasudev and worshipped him. He remained satisfied. In this way, his heart was completely purified and he did not have the least desire for material enjoyment. All material desires vanished, and in this steady position he felt fully satisfied and was situated in devotional service. And the next verse, that most exalted devotee, Maharaj Bharata, in this way engaged constantly in the devotional service of the Lord, Naturally, his love for Vasudeva increased more and more, and he melted and melted his heart. Consequently, he gradually lost all attachment for, for duties and material desires. The hairs of his body stood on end, and all the ecstatic bodily symptoms were manifested. Tears flowed from his eyes, so much so that he could not see anything. 
And thus he constantly meditated on the reddish lotus feet of the Lord. At that time, his heart, which was like a lake, was filled with the water of ecstatic love. When his mind was immersed in the lake, he even forgot the service to the Lord. Maharaj Bharata appeared very beautiful. He had a wealth of curly hair on his head, which was wet from the bathing three times daily. He dressed in deer skin and so forth. So, as we know the story of Bharata, this is the, the beginning, obviously. So after having renounced the, the throne, he went to the ashrami, engaged in, in devotional service to the Lord. And we can see the intensity. That's why I wanted to take this verse, because it shows the intensity in which he worshipped the Supreme Lord. He gave up everything and became completely engaged in the service. And so, as it said, sometimes he was so much engrossed or dived in that uh, lake of the love that he had for God inside of his heart that he even forgot to worship God on the outside. Yeah, sometimes he was so inside of himself that he forgot everything outside. Right? And so this carried on for a while. And so, as I said, this um, Pulasha Ashram was situated on the Gandaki River, which is where we can also find the, the Saligam, right? So he was washing the, the Saligam with Tusi leaves and so on. So eventually, what happened was that he was meditating by the river, and he saw a mother deer, and the mother deer was drinking water from the lake. All of a sudden, there was the roar of a lion, and the mother deer became so scared that she jumped up. The baby dropped from her womb, just like this, and then the mother deer ran into the lake and forgot to swim because she was so scared and then died. And so the, having seen this situation, Bharata was very compassionate with the baby fawn, with the baby deer. And so thinking to himself that such a poor being will not survive by itself. And so out of compassion, he took the baby fawn to his, to his I wouldn't say house, hut, where he was staying, and he looked after the fawn. And he gave him water, he gave him protection, and over time, it intensified. And it started to happen that everything that he would think of was the fawn. Does it have enough water? Does it have enough food? Every time he would leave, he would think about, is it safe? Is there, maybe it would be attacked by the dogs, or by a wolf, or by lions, or, or something. And so his mind started to eventually even forget the Lord. Even when he was serving, he would think about the phone. So sometimes he was doing his service, and so in the middle he would stand up because he was worried about the phone. He would look that everything is okay, and he would continue the service. Right? So you can see this. Um, take some example from the Bhagavatam. It says that gradually... Maharaj Bharata became very affectionate towards the deer. He began to raise it and maintain it by giving it grass. He was always careful to protect it from the attacks of tigers and other animals. When it itched, he petted it, and in this way, he always tried to keep it in a comfortable condition. He sometimes kissed it out of love. Being attached to raising the deer, Maharaj Bharata forgot the rules and regulations for the advancement of spiritual life, and he gradually forgot to worship the Supreme Lord. After a few days, he forgot everything about his spiritual advancement. When Maharaj Bharata was actually worshipping the Lord, or was engaged in some ritualistic ceremony, although his activities were unfinished, he would still, at intervals, get up and see where the deer was. In this way, he would look for it, and when he could see that the deer was comfortable situated, he, his mind and heart would be very satisfied and at ease. And he would bestow his blessings upon the deer, saying, my dear, 
my dear, dear, may you be happy in all respects. My dear, dear. And so, even when he was worshipping, he would forget about God. His mind became, even though we see how perfectly focused he was on the Supreme Lord before, the same focus he had for the deer now. And it happened from a little act of compassion, right? And so we can see that after having given up his entire kingdom and opulences and family and whatever else and gone to the last part of his sannyas life to renounce and focus on attaining the Supreme Lord, he was so close and then he became attached again. You know? And so it happened that once he was out in the woods collecting wood and the whole time when he was out, everything he was thinking about was the deer. Is it safe? Does it have enough food? Does it have water? Maybe the, the dogs will come and attack the deer or something. And then he died. Right? So as he passed away, he, the deer was what, uh, what was in his mind. You know? And as Krishna says in the Gita, right, in chapter 8, verse 5, 6, that what we contemplate on upon our death is what we will attain in our next life. And so in his next life, he found himself being born from the womb of a deer. But he had, by the, his, by the grace of, I suppose, or the sadhana that he has practiced before, he had the grace to be conscious of his last life. And so even though he had the body of a deer, he could remember his, last, his past life. And so he realized the mistake that he has made. And so he, even though he was a deer, he would go, actually go to the different sages and the different ashrams and spend his time in the association of devotees. He tried to be around the ashramas and so on. And so eventually when he died, the deer, he again became, got the body of a human, or we call him Jada Bharata. And he was born as the son of the youngest wife of a Brahmin. And his whole life then, again, had grace that he remembered his past, I guess, two lives. And he did everything that he could to avoid becoming untouched again. So his whole life, even though I suppose he must have been very wise, he behaved like a deaf and dumb person. Just so that he cannot, he doesn't become attached to anything. And so I find this story to be very, um, very important because it shows the what happens. And I guess he, he was in a situation in which he was already fully detached. I guess that's not what we are necessarily finding ourselves in. But it shows the danger of how quickly we become attached to so small things. So I think what the story actually shows for me is how much small things matter. No? On the bigger picture, we always think in our life, ah, you know, it doesn't make such a big, it's not such a big problem if I miss my japa today. Or I, you know, small things is not so important. No? But from experience, you can see that you can build a habit for years and one or two small exceptions and you you lose the habit that you've built so hard over years and it will just disappear and after a few days you look back and you, you realize oh my god i've done my japa for years or i've done this for years i've made one exception and all of a sudden i've already missed four days in a row right i don't know if it's ever happened to you I've seen this with many things over the time, that this happens very quickly. And it's actually the exact opposite with bad habits. No, with good habits, they disappear very quickly. With bad habits, they're very hard to get rid of, and they're very easy to come back. Right? It's so easy. And so I think 
what this story shows is how important small choices that we make in everyday life matter. And I think we have it, by his grace, we have it so easy in so many ways in our life. Maybe even more here when we're living in Asham, it is so easy because everything is served to us on a silver platter. And because it is so easy, sometimes we, we also resist. And we say, we, I don't want this. It's too much. I want to take a holiday from this, no? And so the, by Guruji's grace, he takes care so much that sometimes he doesn't even serve something to us on a silver platter, but even, he even stuffs it into our face, right? He might even grab your, your jaws and make you chew it, no? But he cannot make us swallow it. At the very least, no? He, even, he, he could even physically grab your jaws and make you chew the food. And it do, it's not very comfortable, I guess. That's what we call tests and problems. But to swallow it ourselves, we have to do it. And so sometimes we could become so comfortable and so reliant that we forget that we need to do something by ourselves also. And we need to swallow and I would say that is what, what happens when we become comfortable and when things become mechanical. You know, that's why Guruji very much dislikes the state of comfort. And whenever something becomes comfortable, he will change it. He will mix something up just so it becomes uncomfortable again. You know? And so that's the danger a little bit of things becoming mechanical, mechanical becoming normal. Because when we do something every single day, it becomes very easy to, to lose the bigger picture, to lose the to, to s forget the value that it has. No? And when we forget the value of something that we do, even if it is every day, what we lose is the gratitude for it. And when we lose the gratitude for it very quickly, maybe even if you have discipline, you will stick to it, but at some point, if you forget the value, the gratitude that you have for it, you will stop doing it. No? Or at the very least, you will not do it properly. And I think that's, that is why it's so important to always remember the and stick to, even if we don't like it, we don't like rules in general, but to stick to the rules that Guruji puts. But actually, there's something that's even more important than Guruji's rules, and that's the rules that we put for ourselves. Because the moment that you stop taking the rules that you t put towards yourself seriously, you will start to l not take Guruji's rules seriously either. Because you get into the habit of, of thinking that it's okay not to live up to your own expectations or to not to live up to your own promises, which is something that is extremely dangerous. No? Because you, under, you lose the confidence in your own strength, right? And so, again, I think that it comes down to the small choices that we make. And of course, you can say, yes, I, before I, I, I sit down my to, to do my career, I consciously try to do it with, with gratitude, with, with consciousness, no? It's very, depends, you know, from experience, sometimes you do your Kriya and it's just to, to take it off the list of the day. And it's also not a bad thing. It's important to keep doing it, but it's important to do something with, with gratitude, no? And I think there are... For me, it's important to put um, lines that you don't cross no matter what. For, for your sadhana especially. Because you have to start somewhere. Technically, we should focus on God 24-7. But I think we should start focusing on God when we should focus on God, meaning when we do our sadhana. Because very often we don't do that already also to begin with. Right? And even though already that is very hard, what we have to try to do is to put ourselves in a position in which we make it most easiest surrounding-wise, where we 
can focus on God when we are supposed to. So when we do our Kriya, we, you know, we try to do it maybe at the same time every day so we don't forget about it. It becomes more easier to do it. When you do your, your puja, and I've seen this before also, and it made me very sad. I've seen people doing their puja and watching YouTube videos at the same time, right? Or why we do so many small things when we, do, when we do puja, when we worship the deity, we take our phone in between and look at messages, right? That's why Guruji keeps saying, like, we should not use the phone when you're on the altar, whatever else, because it's not that it's a, a bad thing to look at a message. It's a bad thing to get distracted from our service to God, right? And it is so easy because we listen to Guruji's instructions, right? And we know that it's important, but it's so easy to do it once. And once you do it once, it becomes easier to do it a second time. And before you even know it, you forget about the rule that it is, even, is even there and why it is there. It's not about the rule, it's about why it's there. You know? That's why, and it's the same with prayers, no? It's the same with prayers. So easy to just quickly look, look at the phone as a, a new message. It's so easy to, to get distracted. I would say for Bharat, I was a deer. We have our own deers in our life. We have many deers. It's not just one. We have many deers. We have a whole flock of deers. Probably we don't have a big enough forest for all the deer that we have in our life. Right? That constantly distract ourselves. But probably the, the biggest, most cutest deer that we have is our phones, probably, nowadays. Right? It's so easy to, do, to get distracted. And what is the easiest thing that you can do? Is to restrict oneself. To create the right environment is to restrict oneself. No? So when I do my puja and I know that I'm self trying to be self-conscious enough that it's very difficult, I don't take my phone. When, I do my, when I'm in my, in my room, I leave my phone in one place by the door so it's far away. When I come to the puja kitchen, I guess maybe some pujaris have noticed, I leave my phone by the shoe shelf or somewhere. I don't keep it even in my pocket. Because when I go into the altar, it's, I know how easy it is to get distracted by it. So I leave it away, out of my hand's reach. Because I know how weak I, I can be. You know? And um, it is these, I think, small choices that we, that we make that I believe are actually the most important on, in the bigger picture of things. In the, in the value that is created or is upheld when we serve. That's why I said it's so important that we put for ourselves, we make, we draw lines that we ourselves don't cross because we put them ourselves, which is our own, the discipline that we put for ourselves. That is not to show to others or whatever, it's for ourselves. To upheld the, the value that we put, the appreciation that we put, the gratitude that we put in the sadhana that we get to do. It's not, oh my God, I'm, I'm so, such a great person, I'm allowed to do, I can do this Kriya and whatever. No, I'm allowed to do my Kriya. I'm allowed to serve the deity. It's such a rare opportunity that we have compared to others. But because it is so normal for us, we so easily forget about it. And so I think that is why these lines that we draw, these lines that are drawn for us by Guruji, are there for, not to restrict, but actually to free us, to give us this, um, a, this opportunity to constantly remember and appreciate why, why, we, why we do the things that we do and to give us the opportunity to, to dive deeper in the things that we do. Jai Gurudev.
Yeah. 
ramanuja mangal mangal me yati raj ramanuja mangal mangal me ramanuja ramanuja mangal mangal me yati raj ramanuja mangal mangal me yati indraya karuna karaya mangal mangal me Yatindraya karuna karaya mangala mangala me Prapati dharme karataya mangala mangala me Prapati dharme karataya mangala mangala me Ramanuja ramanuja mangala mangala me Yatiraja ramanuja mangala mangala me Ramanuja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Yati Raja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Sali Grama Pratishtitaya Mangala Mangala Me Sali Grama Pratishtitaya Mangala Mangala Me Vidanda Dharine Godagra Jaya Mangala Mangala Me Vidantadari Vigodagaraya Mangala Mangala Me Ramanuja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Yati Raja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Ramanuja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Yati Raja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Rangi sake kare rataya mangala mangala me Rangi sake kare rataya mangala mangala me Manana thaya dhari ne dharaya mangala mangala me Manana thaya dhari ne dharaya mangala mangala me Ramanuja Ramanuja mangala mangala me Yati Raja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Ramanuja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Yati Raja Ramanuja Mangala Mangala Me Om Jai Lakshmi Mata Jaya Jaya Lakshmi Mata Tumako Nishadina Sevata Tumako Nishadina Sevata Hara Vishnu Vidata Om Jaya Lakshmi Mata Umara Madramani Tumai Jagamata Maya Tumai Jagamata Surya Chandra Madhyavata Surya Chandra Madhyavata Narada Rishi Gata Om Jaya Lakshmi Mata Surya Rupa Niranjani Sukha Sampati Gata Maya Sukha Sampati Gata Jokoi Tumma Kodhyavata Siddhi Dhanna Pata Om Jaya Lakshmi Mata Tumma Mata Lani Vasini Tumma Ishu Padata Meya Tumma Ishu Padata Karma Prabhava Prakashini Karma Prabhava Prakashini Bhavani Dikhi Prata Om Jaya Lakshmi Mata Sagara me to Marathi, Sabasa Gunata, Maya Sabasa Gunata, Sabasa Baba Ojata, Sabasa Baba Ojata, Manana in Kabarata, Om Jaya Lakshmi Mata, Tuma Bina Yasna Naote, Vastra Nakoi Pata. Kana Panakave Baba, Kana Panakave Baba, Sabat 